do it. Oh my god. Going straight from a 50LX to a four cylinder. Well, look at the difference. You can't get over that. That's crazy. All right, well, there you have it. Look at that. All right, you guys, what's going on? So we're actually going to start off the video with the Fox body again, and we're going to try to save this paint. A lot of you guys have noticed it. It looks like it got sandblasted in the front end. A couple panels we think we're going to repaint, but I don't want to repaint the whole car for, for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, I don't think it's worth repainting the entire car. I think we can save most of it. Basically, behind the door of this car, it looks pretty good. Yeah, so you can see the front of this car. I don't know what's going on with the headlight bucket part right there. The bumper, pretty blasted, and the hood's very faded and cracked. I think the hoods flew up once, once or twice, because you can see it's like cracked right in line with the windshield wiper. Um, but we're changing the hood. We're going to sand and repaint the bumper. But I think I want to try to repair the paint on these fenders the best I can because the paint on this car is actually in good shape. It's It's been wet sanded a couple times, so we're just going to basically finish and buff the whole thing and kind of finish the process to try to save the paint. But you can see some oxidation on the roof um, and minor things like that. But I don't think looking at, you know, from the door back, everything on this car seems to be very, very well kept and well usable. I don't think the back of the car needs to be repainted whatsoever. I think that's in very good shape. So we're going to try on the door, taking out. So you're using a, a clay bar first? Yeah. Yeah, this is clay bar to remove some of the contaminants. It didn't feel that bad, probably because they just wet sanded it yeah. recently. You can kind of see it right there. I'm just see. doing it so I don't get my pad contaminated with yeah, like, just dirt drag and it stuff. all over everything. Yeah. And being a black car, it makes it a lot easier because you can very well see when it, you know, got swirls or something in it, but yeah. pain to get it to actually look straight. It's hard to get it to look perfect. Yeah, but it's definitely been wet sanded on already. Um, and I think they started buffing it. And I don't think they ever totally finished to like the, the polish state. Um, it's very smooth. The panel's smooth, which is cool. I mean, you can see me. There's no orange peel in it, but you can see the chalkiness and the, the sanding lines as you go down. So we're just going to be basically removing those and kind of polishing the whole thing out. And I think if we just go basically from front to back and at least polish out what's foggy and swirl mark, it'll be really easy to tell what's savable and what's not. Um, I'm probably still going to put a stock hood back on this thing. So if anyone wants this ugly hood, I do not want it. <laughs> I think the car definitely would look better with a stock hood on it. But that thing is, uh, just, I'm not a fan of it personally. But you can see really well. It's kind of hard to pick it up on camera, but on this front fender right here, all the lines that go down it. So that's where we kind of try and eliminate. It's getting all these sanding lines out of here. So they're pretty, there's some pretty good ones, not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, so since it looks like they already wet sanded this, they didn't compound it enough to get rid of the scratches from the sandpaper. So I'm gonna use the most aggressive compound and pad combo that I have, which is, this is a, I think it's a Lakewood is the brand, but it's a cutting pad. So you can see it's a lot firmer. I could show you one of the other ones later. It's firmer than the polishing pads or the finishing pads. And I'm using uh, Meguiar's M105 Ultra Cut Compound. This stuff is amazing, especially yeah. for old cars. Yeah, this is pretty much much, you can see extra heavy cut and then light cut. This is the, the most aggressive compound that they make. Yeah. So this will do its best to remove the scratches from the wet sanding process. It'll be easy not to wreck the paint even yeah, worse. It's random direction DA. So. Yeah. That looks like a really good black paint job when you get it like that. Yeah. You can just see the difference too. Wow. You can see your whole reflection. It's like a mirror. I've never had a nice Not car bad. with paint, so. <laughs> that is pretty good, yeah. He's a patina boy. Yeah, I know. Dang, yeah, you look, I was difference. gonna say, look right there. It's just like, it's like a, you don't even need to put a tape line down. It's just like chalky over there and then. I could even read your shirt from through the paint. <laughs> put uh, the polish on there either. Yeah, it looks like there might have got some overspray from from one point on off of something, but and like um, you can still see some lines in it where I think that's probably from the previous grit. Yeah, like, I, obviously I, you're supposed to sand out the previous the, grit scratches. My but. my worry was that they started with like 800 and it just like maybe went a little too aggressive, but yeah, you know, if I can get a mo majority of them out, whatever. I mean, it looks a lot better than this. No, I agree. That looks sick. Even just that one spot, it's like I've never had a black car, so being able to like see all the reflection, but now you can see any little now, now I can see why why people are scared of black cars is you can see any little imperfection which like any sort there now i could see yeah it. i was gonna say any little <laughs> run or uneven spot you can even see the town car in the background that's so weird because i look at my truck and i'm like man i've never been able to see my face my truck even when it's wet <laughs> but you could definitely see the the difference right there it's like it's like a legit line right here it's gonna look weird when i'm filming in this in the up to the car now it's gonna be like a mirror
all down low. There's some drips down here. Yeah, I was gonna say, and on the repaint, you, you get down really low and you see some of the flaws. You can see my inner fender liner is kind of like falling out. It's like a broken zip tie holding it in. But look at the difference. You can't get over that. That's crazy. Massive shout out to Sam coming out and helping me with the car. He does also have a really cool YouTube channel. I'll put it up on the screen down in the description for you guys down below. Uh, definitely go subscribe to his channel. Support the smaller channels is what we're trying to do around here. The guys that are like sub 20,000, those are the guys that you get them going. They make the best content. So definitely check it out. All right, now we're we off to go to Sam's house for a little better workspace. You can see it's shaded. We got Sam's car. Is that your YouTube channel too? Now? Um, now, yeah. Or is it still Saw Garage? It's, it's SW Speed. Now. Okay, so yeah, subscribe to his channel and follow his Instagram for cool Subaru stuff. But we're gonna start wet sanding. Uh, you can actually see in this lighting the like one little area you can see right, right, right around here that we've done already. And then the back part of the door, we've already done one pass on buffing. Or cutting, not buffing. Is that fang? So we're gonna go ahead and start wet sanding the roof because there's a ton of oxidation we're gonna try to get off. And you can see all the like there's like some pretty good orange peel. It's very fuzzy. So we're gonna try to get rid of all that and uh, kind of work our way around. I think the only thing we're not really gonna waste much time on is the hood because as you guys know, we're getting rid of this ugly thing and putting a stock hood back on it and repainting it. So we probably won't bother with the front bumper of the hood, but we'll try to do the fenders as best we can, doors. Just a couple before shots for you guys. So as I'm walking around, you can see the wing right here is in pretty bad shape. It's a ton of different, you know, scratches and just oxidation, a lot of it. And I think a lot of it is wax that's caked onto it from over the years. A Bunch of stuff that's coming out of this wing from when it sat. Almost looks like tree sap or something that was coming out of here. Like try to get all that crap off. So yeah, fun stuff. Get to it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and lower the truck right now and show you guys what's actually like in this thing. Oh my God, you can already see it. What was underneath this wing. Now I think this car sat for like 10 years somewhere and it was just abandoned at one point. I'm not really sure why or what happened to it. Oh my God. Wow. That's insane. What the heck? Wow, dude. Yeah, Fox Buddies look super ugly without the wing. Like, that is uh, that's not a good look. That looks really dumb, actually. I hate that. I'm definitely gonna fix that. But I figure now I can go ahead and clean underneath the hatch. So you're probably wondering why we even bothered taking this wing off in the first place. And I kept seeing like little particles of leaves and bits come out from underneath the wing and it was bugging the heck out of me. And now we can actually get in here and clean this and hopefully buff some of this stuff off. Basically buff this and clean this and then put the wing on top of it and buff them separately. We'll never have any sort of problems. You can see this thing sat so long that there's even a bunch of this stuff underneath the rear window trim um, as it goes along. So hopefully it needs to be cleaned. <laughs> I'm hoping it's all actually black under here or if it's just primer but it looks like it's black so it's kind of it's leading into more and more and more that this is the original color of the car because i don't know i'd like to get a monitor report on this thing actually if i can and see So I'm no professional at this, but I've been doing an X pattern wet sanding with 2000 grit. We tried the 3000 and it did pretty good. You can see it's actually polishing up really well over there. Um, but right now I stepped down to a 2000 because there's a bunch of sanding marks. You can actually, they're very faint. There you go, you can barely see it right there, right there. Those guys right there. So there's a bunch of those as I go throughout the paint uh, from this being repainted at one point. Um, you can see them up here on the roof. There's a couple of them. You can actually see the lines. So uh, at one point this thing didn't, it was sanded. It wasn't really, it was sanded not to a high enough grit and blocked out before it was painted on the roof at least, which is probably why there's things chipping and stuff like that. But now I can run my hand across this system really smooth. So I have a feeling when we buff this, it'll come up better than that side and we might do a little bit more wet sanding on that side. So basically I'm gonna make the trunk to the glass, to the roof, to the hood all seamless. Yeah, so you guys can see as I walk around, so we just, did a pass of 3,000, 2,000. I'm gonna do the 3,000 on the other side, and then we're gonna buff the whole thing. But the wet sanding definitely was the ticket on this one. <clears throat> Keep in mind, we started at 2,000. Started there. So you don't wanna start at like 500. <laughs> definitely not. So this is a foam pad. Got this thing out of Riley's. You can get literally any grit you want up to 5,000 at O'Reilly's. You don't need to go to a fancy body shop or keep in mind I own a patina truck, so I don't know what I'm doing. It doesn't really matter because it's such high of a grit, but I try to go in some sort of an X pattern just to alleviate the chance of there being any sort of lines. But you can already see how glass smooth it is. 
I mean, it's still got a little bit of haziness, but it's way better than what it was. I mean, the roof of this thing was incredibly oxidized, so. Let that dry, I'll come back and polish it. That's a Harbor Freight pad, right? No, this is a Lake Country. Okay, well, they all do the same thing. It's coarse cut pad. And then this is the 105. This is like any sort of classic car guy. This is your bread and butter. Uh, so it's coarse cutting compound on a coarse pad. Uh, that's a six inch or is that a five? Five and a half? Okay, yeah. So, and then you just get an orbital buffer and go at it. Medium high speed? I put it on speed setting five out of six. Okay, so yeah, so pretty high. Pretty high, yeah. You guys can definitely see the difference. Glass smooth, I mean, just the reflection of my hand. Very, it's just not hazy anymore, which is good. So we'll just do one more pass, get rid of some of the light scratches and we'll call it good enough. This isn't a show car, I'm trying to make a 10 footer here. So call it good enough. <laughs> but that's the basic gist of the whole car. We'll kind of run through it and basically wet sand, peat parts that need to be wet sanded. The roof is really bad. So that's probably the most we'll, we'll have to do. But we'll wet sand the parts that need to be wet sanded and then probably do about two passes of cutting and then hopefully a one buff pass or polish pass. Um, and we'll go through that when we get there. So we're gonna go ahead and cut the whole car and kind of show you some before and afters. You can see the difference between the house as I kind of work my way over. Can't even see it. So there's a six. Oh, there is a 69 on my roof. What the <laughs> hell is up with that? It's a 69 on my roof. <laughs> Blow this crap off. Wow. I put that on every time I went surfing. So, so you go surfing to wear. Socks oh, are cool because you can do that though. I just feel like it's better to use a hose. Oh my god, it's like legit mud. That is really bad. Look at that. Wow. Oh, don't mind my. Oh, geez, I'm gonna get demonetized now. I just realized what's in my hand. I got caught holding a truly T, Sam. What do I do? Yeah. That definitely needed to happen. That needed yeah. a hose, yeah. Yeah. Get in and out of the damn car. Oh, that, that was, was funny. Hilarious. You know, Yeah, it looks like a mirror from this shot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sun's on it, so we can see. I see a little, like, like just before, I see some lines. But, I don't know, I could probably run another pass on it. I don't know if it'll make much of a difference, though. I notice you guys can see it a lot better from the inside. So I'm probably going to continue to film this from in here. But man, that looks good. Way better. Way better. So this is our... Wait, what did you do? Two steps of cutting on this? See, it's not gonna focus on it, but there is a couple little tiny scratches that you guys probably won't be able to see unless I turn the exposure way up. There you go, now you can see them. There you go, now you can see the little itty bitty scratches. As I run along it. Nothing too crazy though. I mean, I can't be too picky with this car. The paint's not in amazing shape as we have a massive chip right there. A lot better, I'll live with that, especially being a black car. In fact, I can pretty much read what lens I'm using right now and the reflection of this is enough for me. ugly, nasty, very old badge off. Not even V6, straight to four cylinder. So we're, I'm pulling this off because it, it, the badge itself is very old and it looks terrible in my own opinion. I don't personally like the 5.0 badge, it looks tacky as hell to me, but I know I'll put it back on just because it's 
what should be on the car, but I'm gonna get a brand new one with the proper rubber because this is just some double-sided 3M that doesn't fit at all and it was collecting dirt. So I'm gonna pull this off so I can wet sand right here and then we can buff it out and I'll put badges back on it later. About 9.30, I'm getting out pretty good here, you can see the is looking pretty good, the door is looking good, so I walk my way back, uh, I put the wing back on, Sam did the back of the trunk, you can see the difference, we haven't done the wing yet, did the back of the hatch, it needs another pass on the back here, but the uh, back of the hatch looks pretty good, hasn't been wiped down yet, so... Sam's done this whole side already. It's really good. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the car mostly back together and I'll catch up with you guys when it's daylight. All right, so back day two. It was perfectly clean until it rained for like 20 minutes last night. The whole car looks like crap. Downside about having a black car. It instantly gets dirty with everything that happens to it. And it's got a ton of water spots all over the whole thing. So I gotta hose it off before we can even start. It does look a lot better though. It's a lot deeper. You can actually see your reflection as you walk by. It's pretty rad. All right, little chunk. Dang, boy. He thick. So we got the wing done uh, just after I wipe it down. Um, you can see this wing definitely needs to be repainted. It's not gonna show it on camera just because it doesn't have the depth, but it's very wavy. This paint's very wavy. There's a ton of scratches. You can see all these scratches. That's like a Bondo spot that's stuck in there. Like there you go, now you can see all the imperfections in the paint. This paint is not good on the wing whatsoever. I tried saving it as best we can. It still looks good. Obviously you can still see a reflection, but there's definitely some haziness. Um, that I just, you're not gonna get out. Sanding, it's just gonna go through the primer. Um, this thing needs to be fully rebody worked and repainted to actually be straight. So I'm gonna pull the wing off so we can get the rest of this hatch done. The back of the wing looks really good. That came out awesome, but we need to do underneath here, um, which is a trouble spot. So you can see all in, in this in this groove right here. And we need to go underneath the wing on that seam. Get all those like, I don't know if they're water spots or if like bird poop got on it or what, but underneath the bottom of the wing, pretty much all the way around, it looks pretty bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that off. And then I wet sand to the bumper. We're gonna finish the bumper and uh, start going to the polish. So this is the last step um, after polishing. This nice. 
This is the last step after polishing. I believe this is the glaze or wax or whatever you want to call it. So this is actually to seal everything in so it doesn't look like crap in a month. This is specific for a black car, I think. This is kind of what Sam gave to me. I'm, not, I'm a patina guy. I know nothing about what we're doing today, so don't take me that seriously. But put this on the pad, a specific pad, five, 6,000 RPMs, just like we've been doing before. Spreads it throughout the whole car. This is protecting, right? Yeah, it's a little, it has a little bit of filler in it, and it's also for, uh, it's also like acts like a, a sealant. Oh, okay. A little bit better than a wax. Yeah, so sealant, do all the things that keep it looking halfway decent, which I hope, until we actually have to repaint the car. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna put some of this on. Here you go. So you just go over it real quick and then just wipe it off? Yeah, you let it sit for like 30 minutes and then wipe it off. Oh, really? Yeah, it lets it bounce to the surface a little bit. Yeah. Do it slow or do multiple passes, you just cover it. And it, But you see how thin the coating is? Yeah. So you use a lot less compound or a lot less wax if you use a machine to apply it instead of using your hand or just a towel to apply it. Yeah. And you don't get your seams caked with, uh, with wax yeah, either. Yeah, that has been the biggest pain on this car. There was so much wax in every little nook and cranny. That took us forever to clean up. Damn! I'm gonna finish this thing up. I'll come back to you guys when we're done. It looks freaking rad. I got a bunch of crap in the tail light. I don't know what happened there, but looks like some of our uh, wet sanding bits landed in the tail light. Now I really need the four badge. It goes right there to finish that off. But man, this thing looks way better all the way around. You can just see as I walk around it, um, I should have had the windows up. We're gonna replace the hood and the header panel. It's something that obviously needs to happen. This thing kind of only bummer is the front of this car looks so bad. So now I think I need to drive this thing to a paint shop, get the paint matched on my stock hood that I have on it. Put the header panel with the stock headlights, rebody work the bumper, and repaint the front half of the car, which I'm thinking I might want to paint the fenders as well. This one I can definitely do the paint chip work and get all that stuff out. But dang that thing, I mean, come on. That is insane, look at that. The depth in this thing, this car's 30 years old, so I'm pretty happy with that. Definitely stoked. Sam did an amazing job. You know, definitely go subscribe to his YouTube channel. I'll put it somewhere over here. Um, but I mean, man, look at the depth. That looks absolutely crazy. So I'm stoked. You guys can do this on any one of your cars. I'm pretty sure if I remember right, the only thing we really used on this thing was the cut pad, a polishing pad. So two different types of pads um, on the orbital buffers up in a 5,000, 5, 6,000 RPM range and use Meguiar's 105, 205. That is really all you need. We went ahead and used that black glaze to kind of seal this and make it last a little bit longer, which you don't really have to do. But this is a old car, new car, 90s box, whatever you want to use it for. You can make your car like a hell of a lot nicer just with a little bit of work. It took us two days to do it. Uh, we could have jammed it up. We could have jammed it out in one day if we started a little bit earlier, but we didn't have the time. But this thing came out absolutely awesome. I'm stoked. So I hope you guys are stoked tonight. I liked the video if you did enjoy it. Let me do think down in the comments below. And uh, I'm stoked for more stuff with this thing. But uh, nice to finish it off in my high school parking lot. I haven't been here in a really long time. And uh, they have a nice new parking lot that I did not have. I had crummy asphalt to do burnouts on. Now I can do burnout on a nice asphalt. I'm jealous. But yeah, see you guys in the next video.